This one will cover a lot of ground, including the AMC breakout, the new short strategy, and the announcement of the AMC and GMEA merger. Firstly, we will examine these three distinct sizes and three distinct institutional ownership numbers. We discussed some quote-unquote data issues yesterday since, as you can see, we had 13.99% institutional ownership in AMC, a stock that is highly publicized. It would seem that they would make every effort to give the most accurate information, yet in this instance, it is obvious that they are giving false information. In this case, it's important to find out if their inability to provide accurate data stems from their ignorance of the total number of AMC shares available in the market. Because, as we already know, there are a lot of MC synthetics the float has been purchased multiple times. Additionally, we know that retail investors own the majority of AMC shares, or at the very least, the real shares of AMC consequently, it is evident that this is a red flag that something is amiss, and that they are unable to accurately determine the institutional ownership. But if my memory serves me well, the last time we saw this many shares in after-hours trading was right before the May run 13. As of late, we have been observing the after-hour kind of coming in for AMC, and we are seeing high volume again. As you can see, this is what they are now attempting to accomplish. The price of the after-hours market share is also rising. There are a couple explanations for this, but one thing that's clear is that there is a lot more signaling about the pressure AMC is putting on the shorts and how we're applying these pressures to them, which is putting them in a very difficult position. We're seeing more news stories with headlines like AMC GameStop or NIA, my take on the future of 2 mem STS, which is declining, which is another reason why I believe we're poised for a breakout. As you can see, I'm not sure if this is an attempt to dissuade investors from purchasing shares in AMC, as we are aware of the consequences of STR investors purchasing shares in AMC. It's evident that you're easing the buy pressure, and given that the volume we're seeing after hours is something they can't fully provide, we can also see that they have a new short-term plan in place. Thus, in addition to our constant efforts to advise people to stay away from AMC, we continue to see unfavorable articles about the business. Have you noticed that instead of focusing solely on criticizing the company in an attempt to change public opinion and incite boycotts, they have been trying to talk individuals out of purchasing the stock. For instance, the Beetlejuice drink from AMC Theaters became popular online because of its outrageous price and unattractive look. They have devised a new tactic, assaulting the company's foundation, after realizing that investors are sticking with AMC through thick and thin, by telling customers that they won't be better off going somewhere else and that AMC is a bad place to visit, they are attempting to discredit AMC. But this is obviously untrue because, as we've seen in the past, these articles are simply the author's opinion and don't consider what the general public genuinely thinks. For instance, the general public came to the realization that investing in AMC made sense, and this was especially true for institutions, but the media was advising individuals to sell AMC. Based on what I've observed, it appears that most people are, in fact, having fun at AMC theaters. Although there may occasionally be a negative issue, most people appear to enjoy AMC. Never forget that, while there may be the occasional unsatisfied customer, overall, most customers are satisfied with the service, and it is this satisfaction that will ultimately push AMC to continue improving because solid fundamentals enable you to stay in business, outperform the competition expand even further, and increase the value of AMC. They're attempting to alienate clients because of this, but another way to look at it is again, congratulations to CR for hitting a 52-week high. His current position as an exhibitor in movie theaters must be beneficial. As you can see, AMC is a superior company than Cinemore, thus if you don't notice the irony here, this is obviously satirical. While the 52-week high is obviously not being observed, the film F industry stocks are improving, recovering, and even reaching new highs, which helps us to realize that the industry is generally on the rise and aiming even higher. Even so, why is AMC, which holds the most market share in the sector, obviously not seeing the same movement? They continue to try to dissuade people from investing in AMC despite the fact that they know it's a good stock, and that when the industry does recover, which it has, and is doing so at record highs, AMC should be at the forefront. But it's not because of the suppression. It's evident that the industry has been suppressed and manipulated. Today, let's examine some shocking news. GME shares are being marked as new by Vanguard and several other accounts, which usually means that GameStop is going through a merger or acquisition. We would appreciate it if you could let us know whether you're seeing the same problem as we are. Furthermore, AMC is experiencing this. AMC is now AMC Entertainment Holdings, as you can see. This makes it quite evident that something is going on. Among the discussions that have undoubtedly been held in the past, of course, 
This goes much beyond simply noting that things won't always turn out that way. Though we're not precisely sure what's going on, this might be it. Furthermore, as we've already shown, there's always a chance that this is just another bug, and they're merely trying to encourage people to speculate as to what's going on, similar to the AMC issues on GME. Though we can't be positive it's plausible that anything is going on right now, it's also noteworthy to note that, in the last hour, reports of fidelity login issues and baseline viewing have increased from 1,100 to over 1,500. I'm talking about this because, well, you know, sometimes things go wrong. But the reasons why I'm saying this is because you're always getting problems when it's something to do with AMC, when it's something to do with GME. Every time you see AMC and G go up, you're seeing the holds, you're seeing kind of the market, um, itachi seta, and now when you're seeing GME having earnings. Cool, you're seeing Fidelity people having troubles to, of course, log in. Now people having troubles to log in, obviously unable to them buy AMC. That obviously slows the buy pressure into AMC. And so this could potentially be something as well. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if it is now furthermore. Let's take a look at why shorts are obviously scared. So we just talked about everything and you can see it's worse than that sell M72. Had to make a new hedge fund star to the ex-employees to mon monitor single stocks like AMC and G&G. That they've shorted too much, they trapped themselves and kept shorting apes, winning what you can see this Benstone Capital Management, where they do deep seat research on single stocks. And so this is what we talked about now. You can see that these are obviously firms who are involved with over leveraging in terms of shorting AMC. And now they've created a firm to obviously just research and monitor these single stocks. Now, this isn't surprising when you've put made and when you know when you've put tens of billions of dollars, potentially hundreds of billions into creating billions of shares of AMC and GM, you should be monitoring these shares because at any time they blow up, you have to pay billions of dollars towards the retail you are going bankrupt. And that's what we know. So the very fact that they are doing this again, is just another indication that we understand that they are scared of what they've done. They are trapped in this play. And at any point, they are due to obviously pay us the hundreds of billions of dollars that they, of course, own us. Now, another thing to be tack on the lookout for is you can see if Gio Jinsan's decision to resume a selling more than 53 million worth of NVIDIA shares last week is any indicator. It's the biggest sign yet that NVIDIA has peaked and will undergo a significant correction. I'm not sure what it is, but the CEO has sold a lot of video shares. So the only occasion you'll be sending shares is once more. For a number of reasons, but the greatest moment will undoubtedly be when you realize you've reached the peak and should sell. You can see the 52-week high at 140 and the 52-week low at 39. We recognize that a significant correction is long overdue and that a significant sale of assets will occur in the market in the event that NVIDIA undergoes one. NVIDIA will surely result in a decline in the NASDAQ, which will drop numerous collaterals as well. This indicates that a fire sale of assets is probably in store. Furthermore, we may be seeing an increase in news reports about them being unable to ascertain the true institutional ownership of these news articles, among other things, because we know from past experience that when these collaterals fall as a result of these big tech stocks falling, they lack the liquidity and capital to continuously suppress AMC and GME. In any case, I appreciate your time and will see you all again soon.